becoming man and machine, power extreme. Jake Rockwell, Rugged Land Operation Specialist. Welcome back to Retro Wednesday, the Titerium Hangar. Today we're going to talk about Kenner Centurions Part 2. In the first part, I gave you an overview, talked about Ace McLeod's weapon systems. Today I'm going to talk to you about Jake Rockwell and all of his weapon systems. He has the most weapon systems, he has five weapon systems. We're going to talk about each of these. Coming up! I want to talk about how you display these. So I see that when you display with figures in each weapon system, it looks a lot better. But back in the day when you were a kid, you more likely just had one Jake and swapped weapon systems. And that was the intention of the creators, which makes the weapon systems far more rare than the figures. And it seems like there's enough figures out there that most people could find and track down some figures to have a figure in each weapon system. And that's the way I think it looks the best. An alternative way to display it would be to have maybe Jake on a shelf and all of his weapon systems behind him or around him. And they give you that, uh, that way to do it. It's possible to combine all the parts to set up every piece for each system to be stored away. And that's really one cool part of this toy line. So let's take a look at Jake himself. Now, all of the different characters have different helmets. They are shaped different, they're molded different, and of course painted different colors but this one is more of his rugged rugged land operation specialist. And so that's what's going on with him. Now, there's his head sculpt. We can have a look at his head, his face, and he looks, he looks pretty tough. Now I do want to admit, uh, in, in full transparency, you can see all the way through his chest the way it's designed, but uh, in full transparency there, he was my least favorite growing up. And that's because I just had him with this fire force, which he has, his, his weapon system he has on right now, his Fire Force and the Wild Weasel. I didn't have any of his better weapon systems. So, looking at this, you've got a quad gun that actually spins. We have a double gun here, and we've got sort of a radar dish that moves up and down. Now, these days, these fall off pretty easy, so that's kind of a challenge right there. Now, you could do a lot of things with this missile launcher, and I do want to show you a few things. Of course, the concept is when you plug something into the back of the back and the backpack rotates, you can move this front gun here and you can get a lot of huh, a lot of play action there so whatever's in the back you can use it to move he also has some serious firepower here and I really do a lot of thinking as to why is this guy so much harder to find like to get a extra loose ones of him to put in all my weapon systems was harder than ace or max and I think that this made him less less quantities and here's why because you notice revisions just in these weapon systems over time meaning that it seems like they had multiple production runs of the original three figures and if he wasn't selling as well they didn't get orders for him so they made less and that's my guess and my assumption they actually made less of this guy because he was so unpopular and now he's more popular today because he's got five weapon systems the most and here's his backpack which it's a cool looking backpack it's functional it does the job I know what you need. Trust me. Assemble Wild Weasel Assault Weapon System. Next up, we're going to take a look at Wild Weasel. And this was one I had as a kid, but it always confused me because uh, th there's a lot of things that confuse me about this. But looking at this itself, it's not really that bad of a toy. But uh, to get it to stand, you have to put the extra wheel here and put his foot pegs up there. Now, he does sort of transform in a way. He's kind of a transformer. We'll get to that here in a second. This covers his face. You can fit a helmet on him, but, you know, shortages of helmets, uh, I, I just kind of hide his face in there and use helmets on the ones that aren't blocked like this. So, you know, if I get an extra helmet, I'll probably toss it in there. But uh, finding the helmets for these guys is a bit of a, a challenge. Here he is from the back. He has this little gun here, which pivots to, like, 90 degrees, moves back and forth, and as you move this, yeah, it would, it would move there. Okay, now this plug in the front is so that you can do a couple of fingers. Two things you could do here. You can push this gun up front, and so he can stand up and use this gun. And that's, that's something, that's something that you can do. If you had, say, one of these weapon pieces or something, and you 
push it in the back. Theoretically, it should be able to move the whole thing. And yes, it does. Power Extreme! Now, in order to transform him, we're going to have to pull... There's this little adapter piece, which is sort of hard to find. I don't know how I ended up with uh, enough for two systems, but uh, you unplug this wheel in the back, and then you plug, plug it into here to turn him into his bike mode. And then you would plug this up top, back where it was, and then this plug will just go in the back for storage, so everything stores okay. And you can move the guns to the front, and the, the arms, they don't have the articulation to move too high. I wouldn't press it this age, but you can move these pieces here in the rear to give it stabilized. So now he's in his transformer mode and uh, no transformation sound needed. And he can ride around and shoot and do stuff. But my problem is he's looking at the ground. Like there's no doubting that he's looking at the ground. That just kind of makes that mode sort of suck in a way. I really think the first two weapon systems that we've talked about so far are a bit lackluster. When you get into the Hornet, which is the next one, this one here, I think this is an awesome weapon system. In fact, uh, one of the coolest weapon systems in the entire toy line. I didn't even know about it. Uh, I never had it as a kid. I didn't even really know that the toy was made. Uh, didn't even really remember it so much from the show. But it's awesome. He's a rugged ground specialist, but he has a helicopter. So he's an aerial specialist now. So he's up there with Ace. Really, really awesome. Uh, there's some play value to this I'm going to show you. But I do want to show you a few things. This one I'm kind of proud that I've got as many stickers as I do. Missing a sticker over here. They don't make repro labels for this yet. And I have some ways of making my own stickers. Um, basically, I just copy that sticker right there. Just copy it right off of it and uh, cut it out and put it on there. Which is something I still need to do to freshen up mine. That's something I plan on doing in the future. But anyway, let's look at what all this does. So the first action feature is he has this little button on the side. So you can push this button and it will spin the helicopter. That, that's awesome. And as much as you want, you can just uh, put a lot of force on it. it. It rolls for a while. It's, it's a really fun play feature. And also, I, I'm betting somewhere in there that we're supposed to turn this to but um, maybe mine's just, that's not working or something. Yep, there it goes. It turns that also. That works. This is a whole lot of fun. You've got four different missiles you can put in different places, however you want. And you got these things here, which are kind of like, like just use your imagination kind of missiles, not really missiles. And then you've got the engines on the back. Uh, it, it just really is a lot of fun. It's really cool. Uh, you can set this up in many different ways, however you want does have a working canopy which you wouldn't want to open while you're flying and underneath you have a canopy gun and yeah, this is just really cool this is another one that you probably could get away with not having a helmet on if you're displaying this one love the hornet system i really think it's an awesome system and i already showed you how it stores away with all the parts just fit right on it it's outstanding the next weapon system that i want to talk about is detonator and this is jake's large weapon system and I think it's technically two large weapon systems the last one we talk about is considered a large weapon system but this thing is huge this thing is just massive look how big it is now it's it's, it's a little bit bigger because we'll talk about this thing here this is what they call the power pack and the power pack itself shows detonator on the packaging so it's like it was designed to work the best with detonator it works with all of them but with detonator, it just feels right and, and everything works perfect with it. So looking at it from the side, how huge he is. He has these, these lower leg lifter kind of things on him. Uh, he has these missiles, which, which it's going to be hard to do, but yeah, they shoot. That's for sure. From the front, he has these blast sights. Now people call these sights, like, so you can like zero in and shoot in the right place. I never really understood exactly what they were. Some people think they're shields, some people call them sights. Also has an antenna here, he has an antenna up here, and a little double gun up top. 
he has actual working struts on the back here so when you are to move him the struts actually move and he's it, it doesn't usually fall apart but having this piece in here is why this is so like falling apart on me but I'm gonna show you that it's definitely worth it so I'm gonna show you why all this trouble with this power pack is so worth it when you pull on let's hold them together while I pull when you pull on this it winds it up in there so it's not no batteries it's all human based and then connect it together when you flip this switch here it's automatic it's like it's battery powered but it's not try it again here we go so it's definitely worth it I think that this feature is really awesome it works the best with the detonator and you know as things get older I'm sure I could get in there and lube some gears and make it work a little bit better I just didn't want to go that far with it it still functions and it is awesome now for the creme de la creme of the Centurions collecting so there are three really rare items the traumatizer the sea bat from X-Ray and Jake Rockwell's swing shot now this thing is not the coolest of all of his weapon systems. I still think Hornet is the best, but this thing is different, very different, hard to get. Seems like it's very, very delicate too. So it's one of those things that uh, handle with care, with extreme care. And there's a lot of different setups you can do with it. I like this setup because it seems to hold together pretty well. So starting at the top, he does have a little antenna on the back, which is cool. Uh, it's, it's a satellite and he has the front gun here which will move uh, when you, if you put something in the back and uh, when you rotate this back knob everything moves with that if you put the power pack on it all that would move too this other thing here i think they call this the infrascope and what that is uh i don't know what it is i think some laser shot out of it once i, I really don't know what an infrascope is but that is what they call that he has two sets of giant double guns and you can put those on his hands or however you want to do it he also has these quadra uh missiles you could say now this is kind of a cheap out in my opinion because you want each individual missile you can't shoot one missile at a time with this setup i don't like that i think it should have been something more like what they do with the rattler where there's a connector piece and a bunch of smaller ones but trying to track all that down would be impossible I, as a collector now i like the fact that it's like that but the hardest part to get on this thing is probably the treads. Now, I'm not going to mess with them, but from analyzing this, it looks like at one point in time, if you just slid the figure, you would just slide the figure, the treads would have rolled. And because of the type of material it's made out of, and the fact that it's, it's thin and it has a guide to go around it. So they went through the trouble to make guides in the treads and then in, in the actual wheel itself. So, or the, the wheels, I guess you could say. So I think it would, would have moved, but at this point in time, they've kind of formed it to this and trying to make it do that would make them rip. And I've seen a lot of these ripped. I don't want to do that myself. So yeah, tracking down a rare swing shot is kind of a pain and it's rewarding when you finally get one and complete your shelf, but it's not the best weapon system. So for the money that people have spent on it nowadays, it doesn't really feel like it's worth it. Here's a shot, a swing shot from the back. And this is the knob that you turn. Not really happy about the exposed screws, but it is what it is. And yeah, it's just kind of simple and plain. So I really hope you enjoyed this look at Jake Rockwell's weapon systems. Next up, I'm going to be doing Max Ray's weapon systems and talking about all of that. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments down below. Like and subscribe and Tidarium Hanger out.